We've got a hell of a crowd in the state of Michigan. Are we ready to turn this state red and take the country back? Yes, we are. Now, it's a beautiful fall day in the state of Michigan, and I hate to say it, as a Buckeye, you guys have got one of the most beautiful states in the Union. I'm a little jealous of you on this fine October day. But we have got an opportunity here in the state of Michigan to elect Donald Trump the next President of the United States, elect Mike Rogers, the next Senator from the great state of Michigan, take this country back and give the nation the leadership it deserves. And it's going to start right here with the people in this rally and the people in the great state of Michigan. Now we've got some fantastic people. We've got some fantastic leaders in the state of Michigan. I want to give a shout out just to, to a few of the folks who are joining us before we really get started. We've got, and, and I'd ask you to, to raise your hand and stand up, Congressman John Molinar. Where's, where's John at? John, thank you so much, man, for your leadership. Thanks for being here. We've got a great state senator, Mark Huizinga. Did I pronounce that right, Mark? Hi, Zinga. Hi, Zinga. Mark Hazinga, thank you so much for being here, Mark. We've got State Senator Roger Victory. Roger, thank you so much. That's an easier name to pronounce. And we've got the great Michigan GOP, uh, GOP Chair, Pete Hoekstra. Pete, thank you so much. Now, I joke with Pete, he's going to get sick of seeing me. He said, well, I'll see you next week. And I said, Pete, I'll probably see you in like three days. Because what we've got an opportunity to do here in the state of Michigan is to drive home the message that this is a great American manufacturing state. Michiganders build things with their hands. They make things with their hands. And Donald Trump and I are ready to lead a great American manufacturing renaissance. We've got to make more in America. We've got to do it with the hands of Michigan workers. Now, I don't know if you saw yesterday, but we had a pretty fun debate in New York City. Did you guys watch the debate? We had a little fun. Now, I have to confess, though, I, I feel a little bit of sympathy. I feel bad for Governor Tim Walz. Some of you clearly don't. But here's, here's what I said to the governor last night, is he has got actually the toughest job in American politics. And in some ways, I've got the easiest job in American politics. Because all I've got to do is remind the American people that just four short years ago, we had rising take-home pay, we had lower inflation, we had a secure border, and we had it thanks to the leadership of Donald J. Trump. That's an easy message to get out there to the American people. Now, Governor Waltz, by contrast, think about it. He's got to get out there every single day and try to convince people that Kamala Harris, who has caused the problems that we see in this country for the last three and a half years, is somehow going to do something different than what she's done over the last three years. That's a tough job. You know, I, I, I never worked in sales myself, but it's always good when you work in sales to have a good product to sell. And unfortunately for Tim Walsh, he has got the crappiest product to sell in the entire United States of America. Because let's just recap this. Kamala Harris cast the deciding vote on trillions of dollars of spending that we couldn't afford printing money that we didn't have and driving the cost of inflation through the roof. That was thanks to Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris went to war on the American energy industry, driving the cost of fuel and gas and everything else through the roof. Kamala Harris was the border czar. Don't let the media lie to you. They bragged about her being the border czar for three years during the worst open border in the history of the United States of America. And Kamala Harris, by Joe Biden's own admission, 
was the last person in the room during some of the most disastrous foreign policy decisions in the history of this country. So we ought to feel a little bit bad for Governor Tim Walz, and we ought to feel a little bit grateful to Donald Trump for giving us great leadership because we've got a hell of a product to sell. It's peace and prosperity, and we're going to bring it back to the American people. Now, a lot of you know my, my story. I've actually got um, my, my four-year-old is here campaigning with us, and we've, we're having a lot of fun. Now, of course, right behind us, we've got this great uh, motor speedway, and I, I'll say that, I, I don't know if you all saw, you probably couldn't see because we've got these semi-trucks everywhere, but the Secret Service took us on a little run around the race car track. That was pretty fun. Pretty, pretty fun for the four-year-old, though I will say, and I love these Secret Service guys, they're doing a good job, but man, they drive like they're driving Miss Daisy. I, I, I do not think that we got close to 28 miles per hour out there on a racetrack. My four-year-old is raising hell in the back seat. He's like, Daddy, aren't we on a racetrack? And I'm like, yeah, I thought so. I thought so. But, you know, it, it drives home how much we have a great tradition of driving and of sportsmanship and of building the vehicles that have made this country go for a century in the state of Michigan. That's an incredible thing, an incredible thing to be proud of. But, but, but you know what we have done over this country the last three and a half years? We've got a vice president who has declared war on the Michigan auto industry and has said that she wants to force everybody to drive an electric vehicle. Is that a good deal for the state of Michigan? Now, it's not only that she wants to make everybody drive an electric vehicle, she wants to tax all of you so that she can give rich people money to buy cars that were manufactured in China. It's the worst, and this is why I say Governor Tim Walz has got to sell the worst product in America because I think Michigan auto workers would join me in saying we need to build our own cars and Americans can drive whatever the hell they want to because this is the United States of America and we believe in freedom. And, and if, if you want to drive an electric vehicle, by all means, drive an electric vehicle. If you want to drive a truck, drive a truck. If you want to drive a gas-powered car, drive a gas-powered car. We think that an economy where Americans can choose whatever works the best for their families is an economy that's going to produce prosperity for our workers and lower prices for our consumers. The, the Kamala Harris record, we got to remember, Michigan families are paying about $1,000 more per month thanks to Kamala Harris's policies. Think about that. You gotta, you gotta spend $12,000 more every single year just to afford the things that you could have afforded when Donald Trump was president. That's a disgrace, by the way, and that's an insult to American families. And as a person who was raised by a grandmother who sometimes, my friends, struggled to, you know, she, she would forego paying medical bills so that she could put a nice meal on the table for me and my sister. I know, and I, I know we, we got a lot of great grandparents out there, and we'll, we're thankful to you, and we love you, but when Kamala Harris pursues policies that have grocery prices 25% higher than they were three years ago, it's people like our grandparents who are struggling to pay those grocery bills. I remember when my grandmother, and I know it gets awfully cold in winter in Michigan, a lot colder than it does in the state of Ohio. And I remember that there were times when my grandmother would choose not to turn on the heat because she couldn't afford it. And I happen to believe, and I know Donald Trump believes, that this is the richest and most prosperous country in the world. If you work hard and play by the rules, you ought to be able to turn your heat on in the middle of a cold winter night. But I, I know there are a lot of American families who are going to forego, who are going to sacrifice on the basics because of the inflation of Kamala Harris. And I know there are a lot of Americans who are watching on, on, on TV or are going to see some of these clips later. And I just want to say, I think I speak for every single person 
at this rally that if you work hard and play by the rules, Donald Trump and I are going to fight for an economy where you can provide for your family however you see fit. That is the American dream. Work hard and play by the rules. You get a good life in this country, and that's what we're going to fight for every single day. And we got to be honest about the fact that we have got a terrible border crisis in the United States of America thanks simply to Kamala Harris's policies. One of the most disgraceful things that we've seen from an American leader in a generation, she came into office bragging that she was going to open the American southern border and my friends that is exactly what she did. She said she was going to suspend deportations and she did it. She said she was going to stop Donald Trump's remain in Mexico policy, and she did it. She said that she was going to promote asylum fraud, and that's exactly what she did. And so our message to Kamala Harris, who's asking for a promotion, is you have failed at your basic responsibility. Go back to San Francisco where you belong. You don't belong anywhere near the Oval Office. You know, we, the, the, the debate moderators tried to fact check me on this yesterday. They said, they said, what, you know, cause, cause here, here's one of the things I've seen and I've seen this in small towns in the state of Ohio. I've seen it in Pennsylvania. I've seen it in Michigan. When you let in thousands upon thousands of illegal immigrants who have no legal right to be in this country. Now, of course, you got to put those people somewhere. So you've got illegal aliens competing with Americans for scarce homes. And what does that do? That drives up the cost of housing for a lot of young American families. And I, I believe that we want young Americans to be able to afford a stake in their own country. We want our young people to be able to afford to buy a home. And that American dream of home ownership has gotten less and less possible because Kamala Harris has let in millions of people who don't deserve to be here. American homes ought to go to American citizens, not to Kamala Harris's illegal aliens. And so while Kamala Harris has rolled out the red carpet for illegal aliens, she's offered to give Medicare to illegal aliens, which would bankrupt that program and throw millions of our elderly citizens into poverty. She is th offered to give Social Security to illegal aliens, which of course would destroy that program too. Kamala Harris has said she wants housing and medical benefits to go to people who don't have the legal right to be here in this country. So if the Kamala Harris plan is to roll out the red carpet and open our border, you know what the Donald Trump plan is? Build the wall and send people back to where they belong. You don't get to come into our country illegally and take advantage of our people. And you know, the, 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 the Democrats talk about compassion. They talk a lot about compassion. And I was asked yesterday about child separation because th their idea is that if you're enforcing the border, somehow that's not compassionate. And there is no bigger lie in this country told by Kamala Harris and her media allies of an, a border enforcement is the most compassionate thing that we can do. It's, it's true for people south of the border, and most importantly, it's true for American citizens who deserve to be able to build a life in the community that all of us love. Now think about this. When, they talk a lot about child separation. Did you know that we have about 320,000 children that the Department of Homeland Security has just lost? We don't know where they are. Some of them we know have, have been sex trafficked by these terrible Mexican drug cartels. Some of them we know have been used as drug mules by those drug cartels. 320,000 American children, sorry, 320,000 illegal alien children. We don't hold anything against them, of course, but the fact that Kamala Harris has opened the border has made those children prey to the most disgusting predators that exist anywhere in the world, and that's those evil Mexican drug cartels. So every time 
somebody tells you that it is compassionate to open the border, tell them about those 320,000 missing children. Every time Kamala Harris tells you that it's compassionate to open the border, tell them that you'd like to live in communities where your fellow Americans aren't dying of fentanyl overdoses. Tell Kamala Harris that the compassionate thing is to close the border, it's to re-elect Donald Trump and bring border security and sanity back to the United States of America. And here's the other thing about Kamala Harris that I, I just, I can't believe. We have never had in the history of this country a, a, a candidate, she talks a lot about threats to democracy. Can you believe the, the, the shamelessness of this person to talk about threats to democracy when she is running for president without earning a single Democratic primary vote? I'd say that's a threat to democracy. I'd say it's a threat to democracy when you're running for president, but you're hiding in a basement from the American people and refusing to do any interviews. Now, after, after I, I give a few more remarks, we're going to open up the floor to the reporters to ask some questions. And I'm sure they'll ask some tough questions, but it's important. Whether you're talking about hostile media or friendly media, it is important if you want to be the president and vice president of the United States to go out there and earn the American people's votes, not expect it to be given to you. That's the Kamala Harris approach, and we reject it. So... Now, I, I will say that if you ever watch Kamala Harris's interviews, there's been like three of them that she's done the whole campaign. You, <laughs> you realize why she doesn't ever give these interviews to begin with. Because she'll stand up there and they'll say, what is your specific plan for lowering the price of groceries and lowering the price of housing? And Kamala Harris will say something like, well, did you know I grew up in a middle class family? I used to mow the lawn. We had a very pretty lawn. Just go on and on about something that has nothing to do with their actual plans and policies for the American people. Or they'll say, you know, Kamala Harris, the world was much more stable and peaceful when Donald Trump was president. Now we have a, a new war breaking out seemingly in every continent. What is your plan to bring back peace and stability to the world? And just say, you know, when I was a teenager, I worked at McDonald's and I was very good at making the hash browns. And any person with a lick of common sense is watching and saying, well, okay, but what the hell does that have to do with bringing peace and stability back to the world? Now, here's a plan that I would propose to Kamala Harris, and I mean this in good faith, Kamala. If you'd like to bring peace and stability back to the world, I recommend you vote for Donald J. Trump for president because he's already done it, and he's going to do it again. If you'd like to deliver rising take-home pay and low inflation, you might consider sending a donation to Donald J. Trump, Kamala Harris, because he already did those things and he's got a plan to do it again. And if you, because Kamala, she's got religion in the last few months. Remember, for the last three years, Kamala Harris has been going around saying the border is secure. And now all of a sudden she's got religion. She accepts that we have a border crisis and she promises that she's going to take care of that border. Well, Kamala, you are the sitting vice president of the United States. If you'd like to secure the border, why don't you start right now? Not talk about what you're going to do. Start doing it right now. The American people... She's got the office of Vice President of the United States. I would appreciate if she did something with it rather than talk about what she's going to do if the American people give her a promotion. And, and that's maybe the, the most shameless thing. You know, my friends, I've only been in politics for two years. So maybe if I'd been a career politician like Kamala Harris, I would be shameless enough to do what she does, which is stand in front of the American people and say, on day one, I'm going to make everything better. On, you, you hear her say this? Yeah. On day one, she'll say, we're going to make groceries more affordable. On day one, she'll say, we're going to secure that southern border. And every one of us is sitting there saying, Kamala, day one was 1,400 days ago. What the hell have you been doing that whole time? Her... Her whole campaign is about gaslighting the American people and pretending that she is nowhere near the seat of power when she is the sitting vice president of the United States. She talks about wanting change. 
Well, I agree, Kamala Harris. That's something that we agree on. And the best way to deliver change for the American people is to get back to the common sense leadership of Donald Trump and to stay the hell away from Kamala Harris and her broken policies. Now, Kamala knows, of course, that she cannot win running on what she's actually done. Because what she's actually done has been a disaster. You look at e every poll will tell you the country, we, we know that we're on the wrong track. I think we've got the greatest country in the history of the world. The only thing we got to fix about it is the broken leadership. So here's what she'll do. She will lie and gaslight. She'll pretend she had nothing to do with anything, even though she's been the sitting vice president for three and a half years. And if that doesn't work out, she's got a backup plan. And that backup plan is censorship. Now, I was asked earlier uh, today, how do you bring a divided country back together? And I actually don't think that's, it's that complicated because yeah, Americans, we disagree with each other on a whole host of issues, but we've always disagreed with each other on a lot of issues. We've always had intense political disagreements in this country. What is new about 2024 is that we have got Kamala Harris who is promising not to persuade her fellow citizens, but to censor them, to silence them, and to shut them up. So if we want to bring back common sense to American politics, and we want to bring back American unity, here's my message to Kamala Harris. Stop trying to silence your fellow citizens. Get out there and persuade them for a change, and get out there and make your case to the American people. And I think this is actually the biggest reason why Donald Trump has built the biggest, most diverse tent in the history of the Republican Party. Th think about this. Think about the list of people who have endorsed Donald Trump in this election. You've got from the right side of the spectrum, you've got Brian Kemp, the governor of Georgia, Nikki Haley, the former UN ambassador. You've got, of course, me and Donald Trump on a team with Tulsi Gabbard and Bobby Kennedy. Now, isn't that an amazing thing? And I think the reason, I don't think, just think that I actually talked to Bobby Kennedy earlier today, one of the biggest reasons why Bobby Kennedy endorsed Donald Trump is because Donald Trump is the candidate of the First Amendment. He's the candidate of free speech. He is not the candidate of censorship like Kamala Harris. Now, you, you can go through all of these issues. You go back to the COVID situation of a few years ago. They were trying to kick people off social media for suggesting that it was stupid to make three-year-olds wear masks at preschools. Remember, that was misinformation. And your own government was trying to censor you. We can go back to any number of issues. There are a lot of people who believe that we ought to speak our minds in the United States of America. We're sick of being told what to think and what to say, and we are the party of free speech and First Amendment principles. And I'm proud of that maybe more than anything else. Because if you don't believe in the First Amendment, nothing else makes sense in the United States of America. If we can't debate and disagree with our fellow citizens, then we do not have the most fundamental rights guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution. And so if you're watching from home and you're a Democrat or you're an independent and you believe that the solution to America's ills is for us to debate with one another and come to some common sense solutions, you are welcome in Donald J. Trump's Republican Party. You're welcome with Bobby Kennedy and Tulsi Gabbard and everybody else because we believe in protecting your right to speak your mind and we're gonna fight for that every single day of Donald Trump's next administration and, and here the last thing I'll say about this, then I'll take some questions. The most disgraceful form of censorship that you see in the country in 2024 is when Kamala Harris calls the, own, call, calls the citizens of her own country, she calls them racist for daring to say that her wide open border is a disgrace. And I think of all the things that Kamala Harris has done, this is the worst. 
because it is a fundamental right of this country that when we think Kamala Harris is doing a bad job, we have the right to say so. When we see Kamala Harris flooding our communities with fentanyl, we have the right to say so. When we see Kamala Harris allowing 320,000 children to go missing, we have the right to say so. Kamala Harris, I have a suggestion. Stop trying to silence your fellow citizens. Get out there and persuade them and do your damn job. That's a much better solution to the problems that plague this country. And so on that note, and I, I want to say at the very end, after I take some questions, I want to talk a little bit about our get out the vote efforts. But on that note, let's open up the floor to some of our journalists. We're going to take questions, and I'd like to start with the local journalists first because the national folks get to see me all the time. But local journalists, please ask a question if you've got one. I think we're passing around a microphone back there. But ask about anything because, again, Donald Trump and I believe we ought to earn your vote, and part of that is answering tough questions. Hi there, Senator Vance. Uh, my name is Julia Gorman, reporter for WZZM in Grand Rapids. This is your fifth stop specifically to West Michigan, our side of the state. Just wondering if you can elaborate on why you continue to come back to our area and advocate for your campaign. Well, because I love this part of the state, I love the state of Michigan, and frankly, I feel maybe if I come when it's a little warmer, I won't have to come so much when it's really cold. No, we're going to be here, look, we're going to be here every week, probably me or President Trump until the election, because this is such an important part of our state. And I, you know, and obviously these folks agree, but look, one of the things I love about this area is that it, it, it exemplifies a proud American spirit of craftsmanship of making things with your hands, of doing things extraordinarily well, and being proud in building a great American product. And you know, one of the things that happened in my hometown is that we decided that we didn't need to make things in the United States of America anymore. That was a, that was a bipartisan decision. It was a bad decision. And the steel mill that employed my grandfather for 40 years went from about 10,000 employees to about 2,000 employees, and it was one of the lucky ones because a lot of those steel mills completely disappeared. I believe that if we've got smart public policies, I believe that if we're drill baby drilling, if we're investing in American energy resources and American workers, if we're penalizing companies that are shipping jobs overseas and rewarding the workers and businesses that are building things right here in the United States of America. Michigan is going to lead a great American manufacturing renaissance, and I want to carry that message to all corners of the state, but especially the Grand Rapids. And so my, my message... My message to folks in Western Michigan, but frankly, my message to everybody in the state of Michigan is we can build things in this country again like we've never done before. We can employ middle-class American workers doing it, and we're going to make our country so much more self-sufficient and so much more powerful when we make more in America, do it with the hands of Michigan workers, and produce broad-based prosperity for our people. We can get back to it. We just got to have smarter leadership. Hello, Senator sure. Vance. Oh. Hi, Senator Vance. Thank you for your time. I'm Matt. Good to see you. Matt Whitcoes from Fox 17. I appreciate you taking the time to answer this question. Um, we obviously hear your message and Trump's message, former President Trump's message on election integrity. What do you say to both the Republicans and Democrats who are the township clerks, the city clerks, the county clerks, who are, and state clerks who are saying they are providing a secure and fair election? Well, what I would say to them is that part of the reason that people are skeptical of our elections is, frankly, a lot of national policymakers not doing their job. So let me give you an example. Just last week, we had a broadly 
popular piece of legislation called the SAVE Act, which would have made it harder for illegal aliens to vote in American elections. And I actually think to all of the county clerks and all the people who are working hard to make sure that we have free and fair elections in this country, they are not well served when Democrats block a common sense piece of legislation that secures American elections and makes sure that American voters are the only people voting in American elections. Isn't that common sense? Isn't that what everybody should want? And, and, and so when I talk to local elections officials, a lot of times what they'll tell me is they want the federal government to act to make our elections more secure because they want people to have faith in the work that they're doing. Folks, a lot of them, and I, and I wish you know you would you would say thank you to them if you meet them. There are a lot of poll workers out there that are working hard to keep our elections safe and secure. We ought to say thank you to these folks, but we also ought to recognize that their federal government, led by Kamala Harris, seems to want to make it easier for illegal aliens to vote. Donald Trump and I want to make it harder for illegal aliens to vote and easier for American citizens to vote. Hi, Senator Vance. Good evening. Uh, Arpa Lobo with the Detroit Free Press. Um, you've spoken at length about the importance of the manufacturing industry and the auto industry to Michigan. Here in Ottawa County and in West Michigan, uh, agriculture is another big industry. And a lot of local farms rely on uh, migrant workers with permits um, to staff their farms during the summer. Um, I know you've spoken about the importance and the priority your and President Trump's administration would have on day one to secure the border for illegal crossings. Um, what would be the administration's plan to ensure that uh, farms in Michigan and everywhere throughout the country would still be able to have adequate uh, workforces come harvest season? Well, look, if you're a legal resident of this country, whether your family's been here for 10 generations or one generation, we want you to work, we want you to provide for your family, and we, we want you to be able to live the American dream. And I talk to a lot of farmers, not just in the state of Michigan, but all over our country, and our farmers believe in border security almost as much as any other group of people. They recognize that Kamala Harris's open border has got to stop. We've got to secure our border and prioritize American citizens and how we administer our immigration laws. Now, you're right, of course, a lot of farmers rely on a whole host of diverse labor pools, but they ought to rely on people who have the legal right to be here in this country. It's very, very simple. And, and again, I, I think there's this idea out there that somehow American farmers support Kamala Harris's wide open southern border. That is absolutely not true. American farmers want a secure southern border. They want access to be able to export their, what, what they're producing all over the country. They want low energy prices. They want the policies of Donald J. Trump. And in 33 days, that's exactly what we're going to give them. Hello, Senator Vance, Princess Jeanne Steverson with News Channel 3 in Kalamazoo. I wanted to get your reaction on how you feel about President Joe Biden has been handling the Israel attack uh, that happened yesterday. Well, I, I, I don't know that Joe Biden knows where he is. And so I don't know what I think about Joe Biden's response to the Israel situation, because look, this is the biggest scandal, I think, in American politics in a generation. That for three and a half years, the American people have been saddled with a president who clearly doesn't have the ability to do the job. It's sad, but it's also something that should anger Americans because who went out on television and lied to them and told them that Joe Biden could do the job Kamala Harris, and it is a disgrace. And because of it, we are in the midst of a major conflict, and America doesn't have a president who can do the job. That is Kamala Harris's fault, and the American media should not let her get away with lying to the American people. If Joe Biden can do the job, as Kamala Harris said he could, then why can't he even run for the job to begin with? It is a disgrace, and it gives lie to her entire, uh, her, her entire dishonesty about his fitness to serve. I mean, look, my attitude on this is very simple. And I was, it's funny, I didn't notice this last night at the debate, but they said, what do you think about Israel launching a preemptive strike? And then it occurred to me today, well, hell, 
The Iranians just launched 180 ballistic missiles. That's not a preemptive strike when you strike back. That is responding to an aggressive attack. And Israel ought to have the right to do whatever it thinks it needs to do to secure its own security. And, and ma'am, I, I think one of the weirdest things about the Joe Biden, Kamala Harris approach to this issue is they say on the one hand, they want to minimize civilian casualties and they want to get the war over as soon as possible. And then on the other hand, they make it harder for the Israelis to use the precision guided weapons that will allow them to destroy the bad guys and actually save those innocent civilian lives. Their policy doesn't make an ounce of sense. And we got to remember, this would have never happened if Donald J. Trump was the president of the United States. You didn't have you didn't have terrorist organizations launching these disgusting attacks. You didn't have one country invading its neighbors because Donald Trump was strong and Donald Trump was smart. And that strength and that intelligent diplomacy kept the world at peace. It was an amazing thing for my entire life. Pretty much every single American president has gotten America involved in some newfangled military conflict. The one exception, the one time where you didn't have an American president getting involved in some foreign conflict was the four years of Donald Trump's steady leadership, and we've got to get back to it in this country. And, and ma'am, We'll make this the last question. Go ahead, ma'am. Hello, Senator Vance. I'm Sarah Leach. I'm from the Detroit News. The Biden administration awarded a $500 million grant to GM to convert an existing Cadillac car plant to an electric vehicle plant. Will a new Trump administration honor this for GM or pull back? Well, ma'am, first of all, the $500 million grant came along with some really ridiculous strings and no protections for American jobs not getting shipped to foreign countries. Because a lot of not just the, the, the cars themselves, but the battery components, the minerals, this stuff is all produced in China. And so when we write massive checks on American taxpayer expense to these companies, a lot of times what we're doing is selling American middle class jobs to the communist Chinese, and we ought to be doing exactly the opposite. We ought to be rebuilding the American middle class and investing in our own workers, not shipping our tax dollars off to electric vehicles made in China. Now, Now here's the problem with forcing people to buy electric vehicles and then subsidizing, again, a lot of those subsidies go to China. But even if you assume that a lot of them stayed in America, which they don't, the issue is people don't want to be forced to drive electric vehicles. And so if you don't have the demand for those cars, what you end up doing is destroying the American auto industry and all of the good jobs, union and non-union alike, that depend on that industry. So GM, I believe, just announced that it was laying off something like 1,500 workers. Stellantis announced that it was laying off 2,500 workers. These companies are still shipping their factories to Mexico or closing down the factories altogether because Americans don't want to buy so many electric vehicles. So the way to promote Michigan auto workers is to allow them to make the cars that Americans actually want to buy. Empower Americans, empower Michigan auto workers, and that's how you guarantee prosperity for Michigan auto workers and everybody else. This thing, I mean, we, we, we can go on and on about this, but... We, we, we go on and on about this, but I, I talk to a lot of senior leadership of various American uh, car manufacturers. You know, I talk to the leaders of, of Ford. I talk to the leaders of other car makers, too. And you know what they tell me? That the electric vehicles are sitting on the lot for four or five times longer 
than the gas powered cars. So when we force all of these auto manufacturers to produce cars that people don't want, we destroy Michigan auto workers jobs and we destroy Michigan prosperity. What Donald Trump and I want to do is empower people to drive the cars that they want to drive and empower Michigan auto workers to make what the American people want. They're better at it than anybody. We just need to let them do their job and promote their prosperity, not destroy it and ship it off to China. Now, let, let me let, let me let me just close with with this, and and I'm I'm sorry we got to leave, we got to hit the road here, but it's been really really fun to be here with you this evening. I'm going to be back a lot. You're probably going to get sick of me because you're see see me so much here in Western Michigan. I appreciate that. But look, here's the thing: we are not going to win this race unless we get out there and vote. And if we do, we are going to make Donald Trump the next president of the United States. It is that simple. It is it is so simple. Now, you see the president talk a lot about this. He'll say, Harry, get off the couch. We're going to get off the couch and actually go and vote. So there's a website I want to encourage you all to go to. It's called swampthevote.com. Swampthevote.com. You can do a few things there. Check your registration. Check your polling place. And also find out all the ways that you can vote. Because look, I'm one of these guys who I wish that we had election day, not election season. But we are where we are. And I talked to a lot of people who would love to vote on election day, but something came up. So the way to guard against that is if you're able, vote early, vote by mail, take advantage of what's out there for you because if the Democrats are taking advantage of all these avenues of voting and Republicans aren't, we're not going to win this election. So here, here's the thing. I, I talked to a, a colleague of mine and, and when he talks to, to crowds like this, he'll say, I want you to get out there and I want you to vote 10 times. And everybody gets a little uncomfortable because, you know, we're Republicans. We only vote once. We do things the right way. Here's the way to vote 10 times legally. Get yourself to the polls and get nine friends and family to join you. That's how we vote 10 times the legal way. And I... And, and look, my friends, I... I I, I really do believe. I look at the polls. I look at the energy on the ground. I feel so confident that we are going to win this race and make Donald Trump the next president of the United States. But we're never going to have the media. We're never going to have the Democrats telling the truth. But what we do have is the power of the people. So we've got 33 days. Get out there knock on every door, make every phone call, get your neighbors to the polls, and let's get out there and give the American people the president they deserve. Give them Donald J. Trump, and let's get common sense leadership back in the White House. God bless you all. Thank you for having me, and thanks for all the hard work. Thank you.